how is everyone really doing this morning? Good. Doing good. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah. Now I'm gonna ask you again. How is everyone everyone doing Excellent. this morning? Doing good. 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 I haven't asked everyone. <laughs> uh, from here, go around and introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit just about yourself and uh we'll move on. I'm Ray Alexander, I'm from this area, Chris yes, Burrell. Um, we're all in real estate, I've been in real estate for six years, probably ten. What did you do before real estate? Uh, but well before that I was in packaging, packaging sales. Packaging sales. All right, uh, my name's Michael, um, I'm from Chapel Hill, I represent Durham Regional Association. I've been in the business for two years, two and a half years. Before that I was in academics. Academics. Matt. Renee Smith, um, I, I'm from Cary, Cary. Raleigh Regional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Um, and I've been doing this for 10 years. 10 years, all right. Alton Cooper, Mr. Cooper. Winston Salem, 18 Salem. years. All right. Anita Emery, Pinehurst area, uh, about 10 years. Prior to that, securities, mortgage, financial analysis. Okay, Stand. Uh Clifton Cheek, I'm from the beach, uh, Ocean Isle Beach area. Ocean Isle Beach? Yes, sir. And uh, been in the industry for since 2003-ish. 2003-ish. Yeah. Mr. Clinton. I'm Larry Bird. I played in Larry Bird. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I met him in the restroom. I told Larry Bird, man. <laughs> 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 I'm Randy. I'm from the mountains. Yes, sir. And I've been selling real estate for 27 years. 27 years. If he's Larry Bird, I'm Magic Johnson. Okay. You're talking about talent. Okay, I got you. Okay, all right. His last name is Harry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Bob Bates. I'm from here in Greensboro. Uh, been in real estate about 14 years. Uh, before that, um, animal health pharmaceuticals, newspapers, advertising agencies, all these sorts of things. Outstanding. Yes, sir. Uh, Rich Ponzio. From uh, Ponzio? Ponzio. From the uh, Raleigh area. Yes. Right. I'm not Irish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three years in uh, as a realtor, and before that, uh, text marketing, and I was a florist. Okay. Florist. Okay. Yeah. Chris Dilkopis, and I'm from Sanford, North Carolina. Um, and 10 years selling real estate. Um, prior to that, I was a school teacher. Right. And how's your office? Um, as far as size or? No, I, I was just letting you know I was listening to your conversation from way over there. Uh, when you were talking earlier about your office. Oh, oh yeah. I yeah. love my office. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Johnny Wayman, uh, Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill, UNC. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, we, we just gonna go in slow motion. <laughs>
Just returned last night after four days in Florida with John Maxwell and the faculty. And we have a new book coming out, and I say we because it's the team, called Capacity. Um, Intentional Living has been out for a little while, and I'll actually be um, sending Ellie a book on Intentional Living. Um, I am from Fayetteville, North Carolina, once again. I am a behavioral health therapist by trade. So I provide therapy to families who have youth between the ages of 11 and 17 with ADHD, bipolar, uh, schizoaffective, schizophrenia, and things of that nature. That's what my home office does in Fayetteville. I spend most of my time in the John Maxwell training, teaching leadership uh, across the country, wherever we are needed and we're asked to come. Today, we will be looking at the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. Everyone has an idea of what leadership is based on definitions from Webster and Thorndike and other persons who may have shared with you uh, what leadership is. But just in one word, leadership is influence. If you can influence people, you can lead them. But if you can't influence people, you can't lead anyone, not even yourself. How many times do you have conversations with yourself trying to convince yourself to do something? or to be in a certain place, on time. I'm sure you have conversations with yourself about that every day. So the first thing to do in learning leadership is learn how to lead you. If you can't convince you, it's going to be most difficult for you to have some influence over me. Another thing, leadership is not a game. Leadership is nothing to play with. Leadership is real. Leadership is happening all around you every day. If you would intentionally observe the persons around you, observe your surroundings, you'll see people being influenced all day, every day. I have given you all, passed out the first law, the law of the lead. Everyone has that sheet? We're going to go over that handout. Step by step, because we the John Maxwell leadership team, we want you to know this law and apply this law to your life. And once you can apply it to your life and it's working for you, just by way of experiential knowledge, you'll see that it'll work for others. Are we ready to begin? Yes. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Hold on a second. We got to start with something. Are we ready to begin? Yes. 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 Let me help you all understand something right now. You have to be excited about you and what you're doing. If you're not excited about you, how are you going to make that sale? Me, the client, I'm, if I'm looking for a home and I'm watching you and you can... Oh, man, I don't You've got to be excited about you. Invest into you. You are the greatest thing that's ever happened to you. As I was telling that bird this morning, <laughs> that if today is only great because he's in it, and because he's consciously aware that he's in it, someone drew something of the stick man. Who was it, the stick man? Dr. Thurman Fleet, back in the 1930s, originated that stick man mentality. He was a chiropractor. And he wanted people to, he got kind of a little just bothered by doctors over medicating people and change really not happening. So he started looking at the conscious mind and the subconscious mind and the results. Our conscious mind, our conscious mind, your conscious mind accepts, re accepts rejects, and neglects. Accepts, rejects, and neglects. Your subconscious mind only accepts. What does it accept? It accepts what the conscious mind gives to it. So if you tell yourself today is going to be a great day over time, consistently, consistently, it becomes a new belief, a new value system, a new behavior. You begin to start functioning that way because you tell yourself that way. So you don't have to think about walking or driving? Do you have to think when you get in your car to drive? Because subconsciously it's there. You repeated this act over and over. Anybody remember driver's ed? 
you had to think about driving in, and he had another pedal on his side so he could stop just in case you was suspect. So whenever you are involved in a situation like this, be excited about it because there is something for you to learn for you. Something for you, and you have to be intentional about it. You have to be intentional about it. So let's look at the first law here. We're looking at the law of the lid. The law of the lid says this. Your leadership is like a lid or a ceiling on your organization. Here's what you can expect from the process as we engage all of these laws today. First of all, we will learn the law. You can fill in your sheets. I gave you those for you to fill in. So you can participate. Fill in your sheets as we go. Right? We will discuss living the law. We will lead others to the law. We will lead others to the law. Law number one, as I said, is the law of the lid. Leadership ability is the lid that determines a person's level of effectiveness. So what that says is this. If you have a company, and your company is here. This is your company. This is your company. This is your ability. And let's say your company is a five. Okay? Let's say your company is a five. That's the lid. Now, let's say your leadership ability, what is it going to be? If this is a five, what is this going to be? It's going to be a four. Most people will say five. You see, your success can go no higher than your ability. So if you're not moving like you want to in life, check out your ability. If your success, if you're stuck, where you are, just think about it for a minute. And the things that you're trying to accomplish right now. Do you have a lid on it? Because you have not maybe invested in self or invested in additional trainings to lift that leadership lid. Now let's say your lid is a seven. See, your lid is a seven. What's your company? Company's going to be a six. Before I want to get into peanut butter and jelly, uh, if I want to get into some peanut butter and jelly, what's the first thing I have to do? Take the lid off. I have to take the lid off to get to the good stuff. So you have to take the lid off of your company, your self-esteem, your self-awareness, your ability to sell. You have to take the lid off of that. You have the lid on it. You have the ability to take the lid off. Yeah, you have the ability to take the lid off of it. All right? So it says leadership ability is the lid that determines a person's level of effectiveness. The lower an individual's ability to lead, the lower the lid on his what? Potential. So when you look at the two diagrams there, let's look at success without leadership. And look at leadership ability. It's a one. Everybody see that? Does everyone see it on the diagram? Yep. Okay. It's a one, okay? Now, the success dedication, it's between an eight and a nine, but we will say it's an eight. An effective, competent, or productive person without leadership or influence. You see the lid on his business? You see the lid on it? Now, let's move over to the next diagram and look how it increases. Success with leadership. A person with the same skills and the added ability to influence others. Look at the increase. His leadership ability rises to a six. And look at what happens. He increases his effectiveness. 600%. 600%. Just by lifting the lid. Lifting your leadership lid. Everyone can't, everyone, let me put it this way, desires to lead. 
But everyone can't lead because everyone doesn't want to put the work in to lead. How many of you really want to be here today? How many of you really want to be someplace else? Did it cross your mind? See, did it cross your mind? <laughs> All right, on to page two. Is <laughs> whatever you accomplish, now listen to this carefully. Whatever you accomplish, whatever you accomplish will be restricted or propelled by your ability to lead others. Whatever you accomplish, whatever you accomplish will be either restricted or propelled by your ability to lead others. So the question, how do we live out the understanding <coughs> The understanding. Does everyone feel that you have an understanding of the law of the land? See, you have to understand that your success will never surpass your ability to lead. Nowhere in America has it ever happened where a company's success surpassed its executives, managers, supervisors' ability to lead. It's never happened before. Never happened before. Everything rises and falls on what? Leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. Homes, families rise and fall on leadership. You can tell the youth what to do. He's only going to do what he sees. He's only going to do what he sees. If he doesn't see dad out or mom out really grinding, getting it in, doing it the American way, he's going to grow up thinking he can do it another way because he sees.